I, w I want to read something real quick that uh, was passed along to me. So this this is the you know Akron uh, their their breakdown of operating expenses by team, um, and this this was sent to me after the the men's program was cut. The the operating expense per participant for the track and field team, and this is combined men and women's, um, which it was about. Looks like it's about 100 and 126, I should say. I think it says. Um, and actually, as I'm looking at it, say, I think the men's team, the average cost per participant was about $1,500, and the average cost for the women's was about $1,900 per participant. Uh, the next closest expense on the men's side was soccer, and their per participant operating expense was $7900 and wow. on the on the women's side it was women's soccer at $5900 wow. so it just just I, just as it, it kind of points to what you're saying around the financials where if you're looking at bang for the buck and efficiency and again we're looking at one school one one example but the discrepancy between that is is huge. You know, basketball, for example, on this list is $47,000 per participant for the men, $25,000 per participant on the women's side. And, and what would be nice for track coaches to do is never compare themselves to basketball or football. It, it's just, it's not even, it's absolutely pointless to do that. So worry about soccer, baseball, golf, tennis. Because um, again, like I said before, that is a, a, a battle you will never win. So you're just wasting time. Embrace it, it is what it is, and try to figure out how you uh, can, sur can survive because there are going to be cuts. I have a, a little tidbit I'd like to toss in about the other one of the other schools we talked about, Brown. Uh, mm -hmm. And just as a note, and I this is from our friend uh, Jonathan Galt. He tweeted that Brown, before these cuts, had 38 varsity sports, the third highest in the NCAA. And it just it's interesting that of those 38 sports what was the domino that fell that made them target track and field? Because they have other sports that, I mean, like we talked about, I mean, they have fencing, they have equestrian, they have fencing, okay. equestrian, golf, rowing. So it's like, okay, like you talked about, was it an emotional decision? Are we in a position where like, again, athletic departments have this weird agency in this wiggle room where they can make these calls now that they feel like they can? Because on paper, why would you cut track and field if you have 38 sports, why are you like, why did track and field rise to the top? Well, seems, I think there's probably something that you'd have to go out of your way to do it. You would, but let's take it a step further. Uh, you just mentioned, I think, equestrian, is that right? Correct. At, at Brown? Um, almost willing to bet that there may be a significant donor. And, and, and an Ivy League school, that could be millions and millions of dollars. That is attached to equestrian. Um, there is probably a significant donor that is attached to tennis there or some other sport. Um, and are we... I, I'll just... There are track and cross-country people as a whole we're used to going to road races and doing things and complaining about a $40 road race fee. Money talks. If, if you are at, um, I don't know, State University of Podunk, but you know what? You're worth $50 million and you love your track team. You better endow it now because what we as what we as a track society think just because I did this, my bosses are going to listen or not the, uh, the decisions makers are going to listen to me. No, your, your decision makers are going to listen to you if you did this and you gave money, huge amounts. 
that's the way the world works. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it works in, in our sports. And I'll, I'll play devil's advocate here just to, you know, defend our, our friends at Equestrian. They also have fencing and squash, <laughs> Alex. You forgot them. Uh, you know, I, and I, I say that jokingly, but, you know, on, uh, on one hand, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, maybe there's a fencing podcast out there having the same conversation about yeah. their sport on the, on the line, right? And for them, is it on, I guess that – Is it on flow fencing? It is. I don't, I don't know if we've launched that one yet, but – well, you, you know, the, you might the, want to. It's an emerging. The the one <laughs> the thing about you know, like you start comparing yourself with other sports, and I think this is where you know, Joe, what you say is relevant for everybody. You have to you you have to take emotion out of it and opinion out of it, and and back things by fact. Because if I'm someone on the squash side, and I hear a track and field guy say, "Hey, why are you cutting track and field? Why don't you cut squash?" I'd be saying, "Well." Shit, we barely have any opportunity as it is, and now you want to get rid of us all together, right? <laughs> At least you can go right. somewhere else and run track. <laughs> right, you're right. Right, but think about track. But think about track as a whole. We just mentioned three sports. We are very different. We we embrace all types of people, all types of socioeconomic backgrounds, all types of everything. You just read sports that are not accessible to a lot of the population, right? I mean, that's just mm -hmm. it's just not yeah. accessible. So why is that? So uh, there are a, ADs are going to make dollar decisions. And if you're going to ostracize a donor that has given you $10 million with the potential to name a building in 10 years, you're not going to do that. You're going to take a shot at the apathetic, the, uh, uh, people that don't do a lot. And one of the things that you have to do is you can't be hitting your AD and asking for things all the time. You just can't do that. Fly under the radar. <laughs> How many so don't ask times for a have we seen this? Don't ask for a brand new indoor 300 meter facility anytime soon? No, what the, no, you do, but here's the way you ask it. You go to the football coach and you get him mm -hmm. to ask for it. Right. Be, because more than likely the football coach, what, what the tenure is on a football coach, five years, six years. Um, so you get, you get somebody else to do it for you. You don't do it. You say, rule this is going to help your football team. Is that rule of college, college sports sales? When you're selling, get someone else to sell for you. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> 